No, I, I'll tell you what happened. That's not that's not it. The sneakers I buy from this company were coming in the red, you know, to match the glasses, match the Kool-Aid man, trying to keep some uh, trying to keep some theming going here. Right. And uh, they stopped making the red. So I guess I ordered blue. I guess how many would we have to buy for them to make it in the red again? Like, like, you know, custom thing, not too many, but, you know, we're going to need some sneakers. Well, they're so comfortable because you don't have to tie your they come pre tied pre-tied. I'm not going to tie my shoes. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take a look at Windows app protection policies. That's basically a way for us to secure access to the corporate resources on an unmanaged PC or a bring-your-own PC, so we're going to get into that. Yeah, it'd have to be more. It's not just going to be one pair. We're going to have to... Well, we'll talk about that. Get Rubix. Solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so we're back with conditional access, and last time we looked at a managed device versus an unmanaged device, and we're able to block it. However, there are some situations where you're going to get an unmanaged device, and you do want to provide a certain level of access. But wait, why wouldn't you just block all unmanaged devices? What would be the scenarios where we need to give someone access on an unmanaged device. So unfortunately, we saw a lot of this during the pandemical situation of 2020. And just being that everyone's hybrid, this has become more popular. So a few use cases I can think of. OK, so the first reason might be a temp or a contractor worker, right? Someone who's external of the organization. Uh, we're not, you know, we need to grant them access, but we're not necessarily going to issue them a device, right? So. You know, at that point, they're going to use their own device and we got to figure out a way to get that, you know, unmanaged device uh, some access. All right. Next is a personal machine. Right. And there are situations where you issue your users a corporate device and that's what they generally use. But for whatever reason, maybe on their home PC, they want to go check email or on their, uh, you know, their phone or tablet, things like that. So. You know, perhaps you want to provide a certain level of access for personal machines, you know, obviously not as much as a corporate issued device, but for whatever reason now you have another unmanaged device accessing data. This one I see more often, uh, you know, especially with the hybrid workforce, loaner devices. So there are situations where, you know, perhaps uh, a user's device uh, has to go into depot to be fixed or IT has to swap it out and they do keep a pool of devices around and because of the frequency of users signing in and out right the device itself is not managed so at that point you know more often than not folks choose to just manage the user access because they're not going to be keeping the device for that long right okay and the last is byod and i guess you might lump that in with personal machine but a byod is more of a dedicated device like a phone or tablet that you know it's still personal but the users are using it um you know, constantly for uh, accessing, you know, work email, office applications, Teams messaging. And I guess I would di differentiate BYOD and personal machine from, you know, BYOD is more commonplace in the mobile world, phones and tablets, whereas when we think personal machine, we think like a home desktop or laptop. So yeah, these are all reasons why you might need to allow unmanaged devices to access data. So now when we look back at the conditional access flow, what do we do if it's not managed? Well, that's where we can uh, enforce some policy around the apps. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll have an app protection policy pointed at the browser. And essentially, if the device is not managed, but it's coming from um, Edge, for example, we're going to let it in with the condition of app protection policy. So. Let's go ahead and build that. Now for mobile app protection, we just went over how to enforce all that. We even went through the, dem the demo with uh, an Android device and we enforced the app protection policy. And uh, you know, for both iOS and Android, you're covered there. But Windows is a little bit different because you really don't actually manage the apps. We're just targeting the Edge browser. So um, you know, I'll put a link below to the one for the mobile apps. And then here, we're just gonna focus on the PCs. So I'm going to head over to apps and app protection policies, and I'm going to create a policy and I'm going to select windows. Note that windows information protection isn't really used anymore. 
So just ignore that and choose Windows. So we're going to call this our Windows Unmanaged Device App, app Protection Policy. And it is user based, right? So you'd want to make sure if you have a group of users, whether it's everyone or it's uh, your contractors or you're externally identified, you want to make sure that, you know, that's who we're targeting it to. Because you can't target a device. We don't know about the device. That's the whole point of it being unmanaged. So under select apps, a lot of choices, we just have edge. And now we get to our settings. So really you have the ability to manage four things. Receive data from is essentially importing things to uh, Office, right, um, through Edge. So if you want to upload a personal document from an unmanaged device, uh, you want to block that. Same thing with send org data. That's your downloading, your sharing. You don't want to share from the browser to a local source or another source for that matter. Allow cut, copy, and paste, right? Uh, we would choose no destination or source. So you're not going to be able to cut, copy, and paste anywhere um, while you're looking at those, right? And same thing with printing. So this is a very limited browser experience on a personal device. So the trade-off is you really can't do much, but you can check documents, read them, check email, um, and kind of ensure that, um, you know, your, your, your data is intact. Your health check conditions are just kind of checking the, uh, you know, kind of the frequency of signing in, right? There's an offline grace period. Um, in terms of blocking access and then wiping data. There's really not a whole lot to wipe because it's, you know, personal device. And then of course, just like uh, the mobile apps, you can set some conditions on the PC itself um, before you launch the, uh, before accessing the corporate data in the web browser. So minimum OS, right? That might be an important one to do. Um, just if you want to make sure overall it's a healthy device. There's not as many options as mobile, but it is something. And I'm going to go ahead and assign this to my MAM test group. Uh, MAM. There we go. I have a Windows MAM group. I only have a few users in there. Okay, so with that deployed, now we have to create a conditional access policy that restricts uh, users to only access through that browser if it has the app protection and if it's not on a managed device. So we're going to call this uh, Windows Unmanaged Devices APP for App Protection Policy. I'm going to pick that same group. Windows ma'am. Uh, I'm going to choose my target resource as Office 365. There we go. And my condition. So my first condition is the platform. This is only uh, affecting Windows devices. My client apps. This is only affecting the browser. So I don't need these other ones. Right, because for the other ones, they're just going to get caught in the standard compliance. Um, now, as far as filters, I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to exclude my managed devices. So device ownership equals company or a compliant device. So is compliant, not equals, tr uh, sorry, equals true. Compliant, so if it equals true or if it's company owned, doesn't get this policy. And what are we speaking of? We're speaking about acquire app protection policy. And we're going to hit select. I'm going to turn that on because I only have a test user group. Remember, if you're deploying this to a broader group or you have any concerns about affecting production work, do report only first. This way it won't impact anyone and you can see the results. So we're going to turn that on and I'm going to create the policy. So let's see how this works. So this is an unmanaged PC I'm on. Um, and I am going to go to office.com. And I'm going to sign in as Morty since he is in that group. All right, so you see, after signing in, I'm being asked to access the service app or website, you may need to sign in to the Microsoft Edge browser profile. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that switch profile. And you can see that's the one I want to use. So I'm going to sign in. And now we're going to basically sign into Edge here so that the app protection policy takes effect. Click sign in. Now, very important, you want to uncheck allow organization to manage my device. And the reason being is this will try to enroll it in Intune and we're blocking personal enrollment. So you're going to have to instruct. They won't be able to get in. So this is more of a communication step. I'm going to hit OK. And the device will be registered and enter. And I'll show you what that means and the impact. There really isn't any. But there we go. We've added your account successfully. So I'm going to hit done. And now it's going to flip to my work profile. OK, and we'll hit continue. And we should be good to go signing us back into Office. All right, so now I'm signed in as Morty. And I'm going to go ahead and open up a Word document I was working on. Let's go ahead and take this and let's uh, let's see if we can copy that Oh, And you can see I'm getting the pop up. Your organization prevents you from copying content. Oh, OK, well, let's see if I can go the other route and paste. I have some stuff I was working on here for probably some migration activity. I'm going to paste it into this doc. Oh, we do not support pasting. Why don't we try to download this? Save as, download. Nope, oh, can't download. So yeah, you can see I can't really do anything here with that. Um, what I can try to do though is upload something. So why don't we try to upload a doc? Uh, let's go to documents, PowerShell, scripts. Oh, what do I got here? Adobe Autopilot branding. Uh, why don't we take why don't we take an XML and it doesn't let me upload as well and I don't have a printer otherwise I would show you that but you can see we can we can get around we can look at stuff we can browse our docs we can read our email so again limited web access in terms of uh, being able to use what's here um, and you can send mail things like that within the organization so you can get a, you get a fair amount done but um, yeah, you're not going to be, you know, getting data out of this session. So what does this mean for the device? And, you know, we did have to register it. So if we go back to Intune, look up Morty and go to his devices. So we are going to see an additional uh, registered device here, right? So that's going to be this guy, this desktop I use to um, enroll with. But the device is just registered. It's not managed. It's not joined, which is absolutely fine for a personal device. And uh, if you want to see how that does affect things, I'm going to open up the registry. And if we navigate to HK, the current user, HK current user, software, Microsoft, Windows NT, current version, we're going to see workplace join. And then you're going to have join info and tenant. So if I wanted to, I could delete these, right? They're just registrations. Um, so, you know, there's no impact there. There's a lot of layers to things like, you know, DLP, like data loss prevention, which is a little bit what we're doing here. And as far as what kind of activities we can allow, and, and we could take these things a lot further once we start getting into the Defender suite of products. But this is, again, you know, we're kind of building on that foundation. So when we talk about conditional access, this is a great option because um, I showed you how to do it on mobile devices. And now you can also apply that same mentality to unmanaged PCs. So we're not totally blocking folks out, but we are providing a restricted experience just because that's the point of securing our device. We don't need folks doing anything they want on their personal machines. That's how bad stuff happens. So, uh, you know, hop in the Discord, you know, let me know what you think, what you're doing, if it's working. Um, a lot more stuff coming in terms of conditional access. So we'll be seeing you.